Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video on the channel guys. So what I have for you guys today is episode number 30 of the championship roundup guys. So what we're going to be doing in today's video guys, this video is actually going to be split into two parts. So the first half of the video is going to be us rounding up all the weekend's action that took place in the championship guys. And we have quite a few talking points to actually go over. We had some very dramatic games going on in the championship this weekend. And uh, like I said, we have some big decisions to talk over as well. And then the second half of the video is going to be my score predictions for the midweek games which are also taking place in the championship, guys. So what I would love to know from you guys basically is, first of all, what did you make of your team's performance this weekend? I would be very interested to know. As well as that, I'd love to get your guys' score predictions for the midweek games going on in midweek, guys. So uh, I'll leave all the fixtures that are taking place in midweek in the description down below so then you guys can easily go ahead and make your predictions. And then if you do successfully manage to get any of your score predictions correct I will include your comment at the start of the next video as well as that guys who do you think scored the goal of the weekend and what did you think was the result of the weekend as well I'll leave a poll on screen so you guys can go ahead and vote on what you think that was leave a comment as well in the comments down below as to why you're voting for that as well as that, I'll be revealing what I thought they were nearer to the end of the video guys but uh, that's enough from me we'll get into some of the action but just before we do that guys I will include your comments on screen now so if any of you guys did successfully manage to predict any of the score lines taking place this week, I will include your comment on screen now. So fair play to everyone who did get a score prediction correct this weekend. I managed to get one of my score predictions correct. So once again, it's not the best, it's not the worst for me. I managed to predict the ape switch against Birmingham game. I said that one would finish 1-1 and in the end it finished just that. So that's not too bad for me, I'll take it. So guys, our first game that we have to talk about was the game taking place on Friday night between Derby County and Queen's Park Rangers. So of course, this was Gary Rowett's first game in charge at Derby at home and uh, it was quite an interesting encounter actually. For the majority of the match, I'd say that Derby actually had control of this game. They actually looked quite good and quite deadly for the majority of it and they were crossing out quite a few opportunities, especially in the first half. They were really making Alex Smithy's work in the QPR net and uh, once again I thought Alex Smithy's for QPR had an absolutely terrific game. He really was keeping the scoreline down and uh, Derby were quite wasteful with a lot of their chances they had early on, especially in the first half and uh, going into the second half you think you I started to get that impression that this game might be drifting into another nil-nil draw for Derby and uh, you know another frustrating one where they would draw a blank but in the end Vidra managed to get on the score sheet. QPR were a little bit unlucky with the goal. It sort of came after a couple of attempts from Derby but Vidra managed to get on the score sheet and that has actually catapulted Derby up the league now. So I think Derby at this point in time, they're only six points off the playoffs. Is that too much to make up? In my opinion it probably is with other teams like Fulham looking like a good team at this point in time but uh, in terms of going into next season, I think Derby do now have the right manager in charge and with more performances like this if they can get more of a final product they're going in the right direction and then for our next game guys we have a massive game to talk over we have a Yorkshire derby that took place a very feisty Yorkshire derby may I add between Barnsley and Sheffield Wednesday and in the end this will manage to finish as a 1-1 draw and uh, Barnsley and Sheffield Wednesday fans I would love to get your opinion on what you thought of this game because there was so much we had to talk about in this one first of all we had Sam Winnell who was returning to Barnsley and uh, he was getting a lot of stick from the Barnsley crowd you know I think they threw a pepper pig at him at one point during the game and uh, whenever he got on the ball he was getting a hurdle of abuse and everything like that because obviously he left a sour taste in the Barnsley fans mouths after he did lead to join their rivals Sheffield Wednesday and of all people to start to break the deadlock and get on the score sheet it had to be Sam Winnell who did score for Sheffield Wednesday and the goal actually came from an awful goalkeeping mistake from the Barnsley goalkeeper after he thought the ball was going out I think it was Adam Reach's persistence that paid off he managed to knock the ball back into play and then Sam Winnell knocked it into the empty net so uh, a calamitous goal from Barnsley to concede and then Sam Winnell actually went over to the Barnsley fans to celebrate in front of them as if it wasn't controversial enough and I think he actually said that in my uh, uh, championship predictions video I said how controversial would it be if Winnell scored and then celebrated in front of the Barnsley fans and then that's exactly what happened it was so dramatic so Barnsley fans what do you make of that because oh uh, it's just it was just absolutely mental and then in the 93rd minute Barnsley managed to get back on the score sheet with McDonald who brought the game level and Barnsley actually nearly went on to actually win this game I think they had a shot cleared off the line in like the last minute or something like that it was they came very close to level to getting the winner late on and in the end it finished 
finish 1-1. It was just a mental game in the end. And then for our next game, guys, we had Aston Villa, who came up against Norwich City. And in the end, Aston Villa managed to go ahead and grab a comfortable 2-0 win in the end. And uh, I say a comfortable 2-0 win because I didn't actually think that Aston Villa were at their best in this game, but Norwich never really required them to be. I mean, in this game, Norwich had a lot of possession in this game, but they never really were able to craft much with that. You know, they didn't have many shots on target in this game. I think their best attempt really came from Cameron Jerome in the first half where he sort of dribbled a shot harmlessly wide. So uh, in terms of Norwich, I thought they were very limp in this game. They were very disappointing in the, indeed. Didn't have anything about them in the final third. And uh, overall, Aston Villa were able to punish them for that. You know, Jonathan Collier once again was on form. He's been fantastic recently for Aston Villa. And his first finish especially was a very nice one. A cool finish. He showed a lot of composure and skill to get what, that one into the back of the net. But uh, like I said, I didn't think Aston Villa were, were at their best in this one. But they weren't required to be. In the end, they got the 2-0 lead, the 2-0 victory, I should say, and uh, Aston Villa at this point in time are actually one of the form teams in the championship. Then going into our next game, guys, we have Brentford, who came up against Bristol City, and Brentford, in the end, managed to go ahead and snatch the 2-0 victory over Bristol City. Now, you think, really, the international break did come at the wrong time for Bristol City, of course. They were riding on a high after that victory they got against Huddersfield, and then, really, that was all cut down, really, with the international break going on. So, they came back into this one, and they just couldn't carry any of, the, any of that momentum into this game, especially in the first half when Bristol City were really bad in this first half. I don't know what it was, but they were so shoddy to start this game, and Brentford took full advantage of that, you know. Sergi Kaos, especially in the first half, looked very deadly for Brentford going forward. He managed to get on the score sheet, as well as that Vibe managed to double Brentford's lead, and in the first half, Brentford were in complete control of this match. However, I think it has to be said that Bristol City, they did actually show a very large improvement in the second half. I actually thought they were quite good in the second half. Tammy Abraham hit the post. I think they hit the post a couple of other times as well. And then Matty Taylor as well scored a very good chance for Bristol City. So in the second half, they were actually, did actually create some very good chances. They just couldn't finish them. Then for our next game, we have Brighton who came up against Blackburn Rovers. And Brighton are definitely keeping the pressure on Newcastle at the top of the table with a 1-0 victory over Blackburn Rovers. Now this is of course Tony Mowbray's first defeat as the Blackburn Rovers manager. And uh, it was a little bit of a frustrating one really for Blackburn. You could see that they came to Brighton with a game plan in this one to really sit back and hope to get a point really. They were looking to grind that a nil-nil draw. I think that's fair to say with the way that Blackburn actually set up to go about this game. You know, going forward they weren't really offering too much apart from set pieces but defensively they actually did look quite solid for the majority of this match but in the second half it was Glenn Murray's persistence which in the end did manage to pay off and Brighton in the end managed to get the one nil victory. That could be a massive three points for them. And talking of a massive three points they don't come much bigger than this one as Burst and Albion were able to go to Huddersfield Town away from home and snatched the 1-0 victory in the 96th minute. Oh my word. This was, Once again, this was another massively dramatic game which we had going on, guys. I think it's fair to say that Huddersfield were far from their best in this one, you know. After that display they had against Bristol City last time out in that awful game they had in that defeat to that one, you'd think that they'd come back to this one after the international break, they'll have had time to clear their heads, get back on track in this game, and you'd think that they'd be having like a sparkling, punching performance in this one, but that just wasn't to be the case. I thought Huddersfield were actually very poor in this game and uh they probably, I wouldn't say that they necessarily deserve to lose this game, but I thought a draw maybe would have been the fair result in this game. Huddersfield late on were definitely pressing for the victory, however they weren't helped by Whitehead getting the red card for a, a second yellow card for an incident going on in the box. And Huddersfield, the, the goal for Burton actually came from Huddersfield pressing for the victory. They had a long throw in which Burton managed to clear out. They managed to break on the counter attack and then Irvine in the 96th minute managed to slot into the back of the net for the 1-0 victory. That could be a huge three points for Burton at the end of the season. Huddersfield, they need to bounce back with a victory. And into our next game, guys, we had Ipswich Town, who came up against Birmingham City. And like I said at the start of the video, guys, this was the game which I successfully managed to get the correct score prediction. I said it would finish 1-1, and in the end, it did finish just that. Uh, there weren't really too many talking points to talk over in this game. I mean, uh, ever since Birmingham got the lead in the second half, they I'd say that Birmingham, when they... 
just up until they got that goal, they probably did look the better side in this game. However, when Birmingham did go in front, Ipswich, of course, were required to get that response. And it was actually Grant Ward who got the goal to level it up for Ipswich Town. And it was actually a very nice goal indeed. Whether he meant it or not, I'm not so sure. It came from the um, right-hand side of the pitch. Grant Ward sort of, it looked like he went for a cross, I think it's fair to say. But the ball looped in past the Birmingham keeper into the back of the net. It was a very nice goal in the end. Did he mean it? Probably not. And then for our next game, guys, we have Newcastle United, who came up against Wigan Athletic. And in the end, Newcastle managed to take full advantage with the 2-1 victory. So, of course, with Brighton winning this weekend, it was imperative that Newcastle went ahead and did the same. And they did just that, you know. They got the 2-1 victory over Wigan in the end. Dwight Gill back on the score sheet for Newcastle, as he will be looking to have a strong finish to the season. Wigan in this game, I didn't actually think Wigan were too bad in this game. Of course, Jacobs managed to level things up for Wigan in this one, but after Matt Ritchie scored the second goal, that sort of deflated Wigan's spirit and everything like that, and the substitutes that Newcastle made really did kill the game, and Wigan just couldn't get back into it from that point, and uh, this um, defeat for Wigan actually now leaves them seven points off safety, I think. So, uh, seven points off safety. Is that too much for Wigan to claw back now? I, I think most people, really, would be incredibly surprised if Wigan were able to go ahead and get out of it, myself included in that. But uh, as the race for the title does heat up, what I'd love to know from you guys is, who do you think will actually win the title come the end of the season? Will it be Newcastle or will it be Brighton? Because at this point in time, there is only one point in it. I'd love to know what you guys think of that one. Then for our next game, guys, we have Preston North End, who came up against Nottingham Forest, and in the end, this one managed to finish as a 1-1 draw. So, of course, Mark Warburton coming in to Nottingham Forest. This was his second game in charge, and his second draw, actually, in charge of Forest. Now, I said in my preview of this game that a point wouldn't really do either of these teams too many favours. I still stick by that, really. I don't think a point was a great result for Preston North End or Nottingham Forest. You know, it still leaves Preston with a lot of ground to make up if we are going to get into the top six, which I personally don't think will happen. And as well as that, it's not really clear Nottingham Forest from the relegation zone. But in terms of how this game actually went, in the first 10 minutes, Preston North End actually looked very decent in this game. We looked very good indeed. Uh, Tom Barcusen had a good chance. Um, Jordan Hugel had a good chance as well. And Preston really were pressing quite nicely. But every, when that 10 minute spell did end, Forest just came on top of this match. You know, Asom Belonga managed to take the lead for Nottingham Forest with a very nice finish indeed. He's been getting a little bit of stick recently, I've noticed, Asom Belonga. But he showed that when he does get into those goal scoring opportunities, he does then show his quality. You know, he's had a very frustrating season this year with injuries and stuff not really going his way for Forrest. But uh, he showed his f composure in front of goal to get the lead. And uh, in the second half, Grayson did change the formation to a 3-5-2, which did suit Preston a lot more in this game. And uh, Aidan McGeady managed to draw Preston level. And in the end, that was actually how it finished. But uh, I think it's got to be said, Preston are far too over-reliant, in my opinion, on Aidan McGeady. I mean, how many points this season has Aidan McGeady managed to get for Preston North End? He wasn't even at his best in this game, but he still managed to come up with a moment of magic like that. And then for our next game, guys, we had Rotherham United, who came up against Fulham, and in this game, Fulham managed to walk away with the 1-0 victory, which has actually sealed Rotherham's relegation to Skybet League 1. So, of course, we won't be having Rotherham in the Championship next year, and in the end, I think it was inevitable, really, you know, from the start of the season really with how they were looking and everything that's gone on with Rotherham this season. I think it's fair to say it's been an absolute shambles of a season this season for Rotherham really. I think they've been bottom of the championship now for something like six months or something crazy like that and uh, I do feel sorry for Rotherham fans really, you know, uh, that from the amount of stuff they've had to go through this season, the amount of batterings they've actually taken. In terms of how this game actually went, I didn't actually think Rotherham were that bad in this game. I actually thought they were quite good. In the first half especially, they had quite a few opportunities to go ahead and take the lead and uh, Fulham weren't their best in this game. Chris Martin actually missed a very good chance for Fulham in this game. And you actually started to get that impression that it wasn't going to be Fulham's day. And this one was going to go ahead and end as a nil-nil. But Sonia Luku in the end managed to grab the winner for Fulham. After like the fifth attempt, it took them like five tries to go ahead and finally get the ball in. But uh, this victory for Fulham has actually lifted them now into sixth place into the playoffs. So it's very interesting now for that sixth spot. Who's going to get it? Will it be Fulham? Will it be Sheffield Wednesday? Let me know down below. And then for 
our second to last game to talk over guys we had Wolves who came up against Cardiff City and in the end Wolves managed to go ahead and grab a 3-1 victory and actually a very impressive 3-1 victory indeed I thought and to be honest I thought for the majority of this match there wasn't actually too much between these two sides it really was just Wolves clinical nature in front of goal which was the separating distance in the end and I mean the uh, the pick of the bunch for all the goals had to go to Helder Costa it, it was the third goal that Wolves scored in this one and it was just such a classy finish he managed to sort of mug off a defender and the goalkeeper in the same move with a nice little fake shot and he rolled it into the back of the net. A very classy finish from Helder Costa in the end and uh, a good victory for Wolves in the end which has lifted them now I think 8 points above the relegation zone which is massive for them. And then for our last game to talk over guys we had Reading who came up against Leeds United and for the race for the playoffs Reading managed to take full advantage in this one with a 1-0 victory over Leeds and honestly watching this game Reading probably could have had more than one goal in this game. I didn't think Leeds were at their best in this game. Reading had quite a number of opportunities to go ahead and double their advantage in this one but uh, it was Jan Kermigan who got the only goal of the game. A very nice finish indeed. He managed to fire it in past Rob Green. It had too much power for him to stop it but uh, what I'd love to know from Reading and Leeds fans is if you two sides did meet in the playoffs how would you fancy your chances? Do you think it would be a good encounter because of course if the championship table does finish how it currently stands these two sides will actually be meeting in the playoffs and I think Reading against Leeds could be a very interesting encounter. So there were all the games which took place this weekend guys. So now for my goal of the weekend there are quite a few contenders for this one guys I could give it to Elder Costa, I could give it to Jan Kermigan, Jonathan Codger maybe but my goal of the weekend is going to go to Grant Ward for his goal against Birmingham. Was it a fluke? It probably was but all in all honesty it made a very nice goal in the end. And then as for my result of the weekend I'm going to give it to Burton Albion for getting that 1-0 victory over High Flyers Huddersfield. I just think that come the end of the season that three points for Burton could be massive in keeping him in the championship. So I'd love to know what you guys think. Let me know what yours are in the comments down below. So now guys for my midweek score predictions. So once again I would love to know what your score predictions are for the games taking place on both Tuesday and Wednesday. So I'll quickly rattle through all of my score predictions. So first of all we have Villa against QPR. I'm going to say that Aston Villa are going to walk away with a 2-1 victory. I've been very impressed with them recently. Then we have Barnsley who are coming up against Cardiff. I think this one could be quite a close one. I'm going to predict a 1-1 draw for that one. Brentford against Leeds. I am going to fancy Leeds to bounce back in this one with a 2-1 victory. Brighton coming up against Birmingham. I'm going to fancy Brighton to go ahead and dispatch Birmingham by two goals to nil. Derby against Fulham is a very interesting one actually and as I was quite impressed with how Derby did against QPR, if they can work on their final product, I'm actually going to go ahead and back a 2-1 victory for Derby against Fulham. That could be a bit of a controversial one but I'm interested to keep my eye on that game and uh, Ipswich against Wigan Athletic I'm going to predict to be a born nil-nil draw. Can't see too many goals being scored in that game myself. Press nothing coming up against Bristol City. I think this one could actually be quite a close match of course. Bristol City still got everything to play for down at the bottom of the table. I'm actually going to predict a 1-0 victory for Preston North End. Then for the next game, guys, we have another Yorkshire Derby taking place. We have Rotherham United, who are coming up against Sheffield Wednesday. Because with Rotherham already relegated, I actually still think that they'll give this Sheffield Wednesday side a good game in this one. You know, they, they won't want to do Sheffield Wednesday any favours, that's for sure. But uh, I will say, I'll say 2-1 to Sheffield Wednesday. I do think that one could be a very interesting one indeed, though. Wolves going up against, Not against Nottingham Forest. I'm going to say will end as a 2-2 draw. Then we have Reading, who are coming up against Blackburn. I'm going to fancy Reading for a 2-0 victory. And then going into the games taking place on Wednesday night, guys. First of all, we have Huddersfield, who are coming up against Norwich, and really, Huddersfield need to bounce back with a victory in this one, and just because of how poor Norwich looked against Aston Villa, I'm going to fancy Huddersfield for a 1-0 victory in that one. And then finally, we have Newcastle United, who are coming up against Burton Albion, and uh, what a result it would be for Burton if they were to get something from this game, as well as, you know, the last game they had out last time, but uh, I'm just going to fancy 2-1 win to Newcastle. I think they've been looking quite strong recently. So there you have it guys. There are my score predictions for all the games that are taking place in midweek guys. So like I said at the start of the video I would love to know your score predictions so make sure you do leave them in the comments down below. Make sure as well you leave a comment as to how your team performed this weekend as I'd be very interested to know. But apart from that guys I will now wrap it up for this video. So thank you so much for watching. So if you have enjoyed make sure you do leave a like. It is always massively appreciated. As well as that make sure you subscribe for regular championship content Content. Drop me a follow on Twitter as I always tweet before I upload the video. Don't feel never miss a video ever again, guys. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.